and really what tonight is about is, is you're going to get a challenge from your fellow students. You're going to get a challenge to go back to your faith. You're going to get a challenge to read the scripture. Faith is being down by six points. It's fourth down. And you've tried everything you know and it hadn't worked. And you pull that special play out and you score and win. That's feels of faith tonight. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, God does not give us the spirit of timidity, but of power, love, and discipline. So let's go into our schools and show people God's love and point them to him. Because of my decision to accept Christ, I know that one day I'll have to face God. And he's not going to care how many points I scored in a basketball game or my grade in English class or even how many friends I had through high school. He's going to care what I did as a believer. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So God acknowledges that we have anxieties, right? And he tells us not to be anxious. But he does not end the verse there. He gives us things to do to act against it. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. This doesn't say that all things will be good. This says that all things will work for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Psalm 24, 1 says, The earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants, belong to the Lord. What we call our talents, our money, our time, and our things isn't really ours. It is the Lord's, given to us by our Heavenly Father. It is now up to us to be good stewards of those blessings of, of which we have received. Philippians 4.13, I can do all, th all things through Christ which strengthens me. But don't give up. God sees our effort and don't quit. Jesus didn't quit on us when he was on that cross. He was always there. And he always has us in his hand. Um, in 2 Corinthians 4.7, it says, We now have this light shining in our hearts. But we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We, no we get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. God's not done with us yet. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to encourage you to realize that we each have a unique part to play in God's plan of salvation. Matthew 6, 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So God calls us to follow him, and in order to do that, we have to go out of our comfort zone. As Christians, I think that we need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable in our faith. And we weren't called for this world, so we aren't going to be comfortable in every situation we do since we aren't for this world. First John 1, 5 through 7, I'm going to share that with y'all. It says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with, him, with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. But take that as a chance for you to get to know him. Dive into the scripture, see his promises for you because he comes through with every single promise that he has for you and it's gonna lead you to such a great life and, he, and his inheritance in heaven with him. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse eight. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. God's not asking you to drop everything, go quit your sport, and follow Him. He's asking you to follow Him through your actions and to glorify Him through everything you do and to live for Him. This is uh, Psalms uh, 16, 8. I have set the Lord continually before me because He is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Uh, this verse just really, really speaks volumes to me. Um, how many of you put, you know, put God continually before you? How many of you put the Lord before you? I used to live my life by saying, God, here's my plan, bless it. 
And I found out it's much easier to say, God, what's your plan? It's already blessed. It doesn't take near the effort and the work. I just need to find out what his plan is for my life. God has a plan for you, and it's a good plan. It's not a plan of calamity. It's not a plan of pain and hurt. It's not just a plan for today, but it's a plan for the future.